Approximately 90 million people visit national parks every year. Since the founding of the first national park, Yellowstone, in 1872, people have gone missing in these forests without a trace. The National Park Service says that they keep no database of these missing people, which of course is absurd and has led independent researchers to come up with their own number of around 1,600 people. Theories of the cause of these disappearances range from UFOs, serial killers, and portals, and what will be covered in this video, the theory of feral people. Since time began, a certain type of person has ran off to live by themselves in the woods. Christopher Thomas Knight, also known as the North Pond Hermit, is a man who in 1986, when he was 20 years old, left his Massachusetts home, drove to the woods in Maine, and disappeared for the next 27 years. He claims that he survived by committing over a thousand robberies in the homes near where he was living. People in the small community were so used to being robbed by him that they could actually tell what things he preferenced by what he took. Dick Prenicky is another example of someone who decided to leave his normal everyday life and head off into the woods and live a life of solitude in Alaska. From the age of about 51, he lived alone for nearly 30 years in the mountains of Alaska in a log cabin that he constructed himself near the shore of Twin Lakes. But these are the type of people who just feel the call of the wild. Those who desire to live a life of solitude in the woods than the normal life that everyone else decides to live in the city or the suburbs. But what we'll look at in this video is true occurrences of feral people or hairy man-like creatures who live within the woods, one who was actually shot in a cave in 1925 by the Russian army. Dina Sanachar was a boy who was found in a cave in India in 1872 at the age of six who was raised by wolves. The group of men that found him killed the pack of wolves that raised him and brought him to society where he lived 20 years, even picking up habits such as smoking, but never learned to speak and remained seriously impaired for the rest of his life. Dina Sanachar is actually part of the inspiration for Mowgli in the story The Jungle Book. In 1845, a mysterious girl was seen running on all fours in the company of a pack of wolves attacking a herd of goats near San Felipe, Mexico. The story was corroborated a year later when the girl was seen again, this time devouring a freshly killed goat. Alarmed villagers mounted a search for the girl in the following days. They eventually captured her. Supposedly, she howled incessantly through the night, attracting a pack of wolves that charged into the village in an apparent rescue attempt. She was actually able to sneak out of her enclosure and escape. The girl was not seen again until 1852 when she was reportedly witnessed suckling two cubs on a sandbar in a river. After being seen, she gathered up the two cubs, ran back into the woods, and was never heard from again. In 1724, a naked hairy boy walking on all fours emerged from the woods near Hamlin, Germany. Eventually coaxed into being captured, he behaved like a wild animal, choosing to eat both birds and vegetables raw and was incapable of speaking. After being moved to England, he was given the name of Peter the Wild Boy, and though he never learned to talk, he supposedly loved music and was taught menial tasks and lived to be an advanced age. A gravestone still marks today where he was laid to rest in 1785, and the gravestone reads Peter the Wild Boy. While these cases don't seem to have a supernatural explanation, they do show that at least the possibility of feral humans is something that exists, and the possible theory of a group of frail humans existing in the woods is absolutely plausible. The occurrences of these disappearances in the national parks are truly a tragedy, but there's something that's been going on for a long time. In the Great Smoky Mountains, Thelma Melton was walking ahead of some of her friends along the Deep Creep campground and disappeared. She was 58 years old and never seen or heard from again. Trenny Lynn Gibson disappeared while on a field trip the group planned to hike to Andrews Bald, nearby the observation tower. Trenny reportedly walked ahead on the trail by herself and was never seen again. The most famous disappearance account in a national park is that of Dennis Martin, the six-year-old boy who vanished in the Smoky Mountains. It was June 1969 and Dennis Martin walked off to play a prank on his dad, disappearing into the woods with some friends. His dad saw him go off, knew exactly what he was doing, figured nothing of it, 
A few minutes later, when the boys jumped out of the woods in an attempt to surprise the parents, Dennis was no longer with them. As time ticked by, William, his father, knew that something was seriously wrong, began calling for Dennis, and everybody began searching for him. At 5 a.m. on June 15, 1969, the search for Dennis Martin commenced. The National Park Service put together a crew of 30 people. The search party quickly swelled to 240 people as volunteers poured in. Park rangers, college students, firefighters, boy scouts, police. The search party eventually grew to 1,400 searchers. A very strange aspect of this search is that 60 Green Berets actually were involved. Very uncommon for special forces to get involved in public service such as this. Harold Key was a man who was also out that day. He was seven miles from where Dennis Martin went missing. That very afternoon, Key said he heard a sickening scream then Key spotted an unkept stranger hurrying through the woods. More than half a century later, no one sadly knows what happened to Dennis Martin that day that he went missing. The strange occurrence of the unkept stranger that Harold Key mentioned just makes you think of all these sightings that people claim to see around the nation in the national parks of hairy creatures walking on two legs. The large hairy humanoid creatures that people claim to see in the national parks and the forests of America and North America are documented in a database to have been seen and reported over 3,000 times. You can see a map here of the sightings of people claiming to see these creatures. Purple shows where there's a high concentration of sightings. We can look at it in comparison to a map of missing people in national parks. A very similar resemblance is clearly seen. This leads us to a story in 1925 when the Russian army, the Red Army, claims that they shot a creature in a cave that was hairy and came out running on two legs. The setting for this took place in the Russian Caucasus Pamir mountain range. The year was 1925. While pursuing soldiers who were ousted from the white Russian army, a relentless Red Army of troops searched the rugged terrain searching for their enemies. They came upon a cave that looked likely to be a stronghold for the white army. The commanding officer ordered his men to open fire into the cave's opening. To their shock, a wild hairy creature ran from the cave's mouth, crying inarticulately into a hail of bullets. It fell to the ground mortally wounded. Several minutes passed before the officer and his troops approached this beast laying on the ground, quiet and lifeless. Staring at the creature, they thought at first that it was an ape because it was covered in fur. A general said, quote, But I knew there were no apes in the Pamirs, and moreover, the body looked far more human than ape-like, indeed fully human. A physician attached to the unit would later write, He didn't look totally like a man, but it was not an ape either. It was a male, about two meters tall, or six feet and seven inches, covered with dark brown hair, and the face was dark, distinctly ape-like. Thinking of all these stories made me wonder about the spiritual supernatural aspect of this and it reminded me a lot of the demoniac. Then they came to the other side of the sea to the country of the Gadarenes, and when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him, and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones." That story of the demoniac is of course a spiritual implication, one who Jesus goes on right after that to deliver him from those demons and give him a brand new life. This is something that happened and could maybe even be happening now, and whether that's what's taking place or feral people, or it could also even potentially be a remnant of Nephilim in the earth. There are modern day claims of Nephilim actually still alive in the earth. The Solomon Islands is an area where giants are a central figure of the folklore of the indigenous people. They believe these giants were powerful supernatural beings with abilities and powers. Some of their legends even describe them as gods or divine beings. Some of the stories is that they're ancestral figures who played an essential role in the world's creation. According to some eyewitness accounts, the giants are over 15 feet tall, leave footprints around the construction sites of the Solomon Islands. Some reports suggest that the civilization of these giants lives within the caves and the jungle mountain ranges of the Guadalcanal. The Kandahar giant is another recent instance back in 2002, where a group of soldiers went missing on a patrol in a remote mountain range in Kandahar, Afghanistan. 
When they failed to make radio contact, special forces were sent in to find them, and when they went in the cave, they came across a giant being which took a hail of gunfire to bring it down. We know according to 2 Samuel 21 that King David was fighting these giants not that long ago, just 3,000 years ago. Yet again, there was a war at Gath where there was a man of great stature who had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, 24 in number, and he also was born to the giant. So when he defiled Israel, Jonathan the son of Shema, David's brother, killed him. These four were born to the giant in Gath and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Personally, I believe that all the paranormal and supernatural events that are taking place within the earth are either God and the heavenly realm or Satan and the fallen realm. And what we're seeing with the disappearances in the national parks, I believe is some sort of paranormal supernatural event taking place. It really doesn't make sense in any other way to me. So whether it's feral humans, maybe even a type of demoniac, or even a remnant of the Nephilim alive in the earth today, we are not totally sure, but in my opinion, it's a supernatural event, and it's definitely evil, and it's definitely fallen. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I pray you all are well. Thanks for watching, and God bless.